Uh, we have Tom Broker from the USGS on the phone right now. He's the director of the USGS. Good morning. Good morning to you. So we've been waiting for some aftershocks, and this is the strongest one we felt so far. Do the chances of stronger aftershocks diminish as we get farther away from the 6.0 quake? Well, yes, that's right. Um, when the, the main shocks happened on Sunday, there was about a 50% chance of a magnitude 5 aftershock. And yesterday, that chance had dropped down to about 1 in 4. So the uh, chances of that size of an uh, aftershock keep, keep falling. You're right, this is the biggest aftershock we've seen. But we have seen about 80 aftershocks, and we just expect to see at least that. I know you've had boots on the ground out in the area looking at some of the fissures that opened up in the ground and you were kind of a putting it near the West Napa Fault. Have you gotten any closer to figuring out if you found a new section of the West Napa Fault or uh, is this uh, in a different location the fault than you thought it was? Where are you in terms of mapping the area out here? Uh, that's a good question. We're still working on that. This, this aftershock this morning was south of the main shock by a couple miles and it extends, uh, we had seen some breakage uh, of the surface to the south uh, or near the main shock but this would extend that line of uh, earthquake uh, fault uh, farther to the south and a little bit to the east so it's telling us uh, more about the earthquake fault but we still need to evaluate it Tom, I'm just wondering, as a parent, and you go through Sunday and your kid is freaked out, understandably, let's say, and then today they feel you know, a pretty strong shake again. Can you say something like this? I want to know if I'm going out on a limb. Can you say to your kid, no, don't worry, honey. We already got the, uh, something big. Then we got you know, a good size aftershock. There will be nothing now for a while. Like uh, nothing bigger is going to happen in the immediate future. Can you say that? No. No. <laughs> you say that the chances are very small that something bigger will happen. Um, you know, and, it, yeah, and it's likely that you know we've seen the worst, but we we can't say no. You're not going to see something bigger. But right. what we're, what you can tell your children is what we're seeing so far is really typical, and uh, we just have to expect that there will be more aftershocks and, and mo most likely uh, they won't be much bigger than they've been so far maybe a one to five um, but you can't say no there's not going to be a big earthquake Okay. Now, we always hear uh, seismologists talk about the Hayward Fault as the most uh, likely fault for uh, the next large earthquake. This doesn't do anything to diminish the chances of a large quake on the Hayward Fault, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay. No, with no, the stretching you, thing? What um, do you call that when it's releasing? Stress relief. Yeah. Well, we used to think like that, but now we realize that when an earthquake happens, you don't, you don't, you don't get rid of the stress, you move it around. And so you, uh, you're not really reducing the stress on other faults. It's, and, and this is, a, uh, I hate to say it, but even a magnitude six is not a, a huge earthquake and it's not the size, it's not the biggest earthquake we expect in the Bay Area and it's not releasing very much stress. Mm. Tom Broker, director of the USGS, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for calling in.